Welcome to a celebration of the Harold Herman Lab Theater at Shenandoah Conservatory. This virtual experience is comprised of an overview of the space, some of the history behind Harold Herman and Shenandoah Conservatory, and real performances by Shenandoah Conservatory students. But first, we'll begin with an introduction from Shenandoah Conservatory Dean, Dr. Michael Stepniak. Hello. I can't tell you how exciting it is to be introducing the Harold Herman Lab Theater. I think I need to say a thank you first to Will Ingham and Tom Albert, for it was in a conversation with them both that the idea first emerged of this state-of-the-art space, not only for the instruction of theater students, but also for student performance. Harold Herman, as many of you know, was much more than just a champion of musical theater. He was a passionate teacher, and he loved seeing students learn and seeing students perform. So it's only fitting that this state-of-the-art space, state-of-the-art not only for instruction, but also for performance, is completed. 140 people ended up coming together to donate. This was really a labor of love. From the visionary cornerstone donors, Mr. Nick Naranjas and Mrs. Jacqueline Mars, to so many in our community, including within the conservatory faculty and staff. I can't thank each one of you enough for helping to support this vision and helping us to realize this vision. I hope you enjoy this introduction. Hi, I'm Jenny Dalrymple, and I am a sophomore musical theater major at Shenandoah Conservatory, and I'm graduating in 2023. Right now I'm in an intro to production class where we're learning about the new lighting system in here. And it is so amazing. Every day I'm blown away by how much possibility there is. When you walk into this room, you kind of just get an overwhelming sense of like something great is gonna happen. It is just such a professional space. So it feels like I'm in the professional world already, even though it's an educational space. So it's just allowed me to really get to that next level as a performer and not hold back in any way. Welcome to the Harold Herman Lab Theater. My name is Will Ingham. I'm a faculty emeritus here at Shenandoah Conservatory. I retired last year. I was around for a very long time, and when uh, Mr. Herman passed away, um, Tom Albert, the dean, uh, Michael and I, the three of us sat down and we tried to come up with a way to commemorate who Hal was and what he stood for. He was very big on students getting to work. He wanted them to be able to perform as much as they possibly could. Um, so this is what we thought was a great way to honor his legacy at Shenandoah because without him, none of the theater really would have been here. In my mind, this is unsurpassed in a, a facility that is both multi-purpose and can handle a, uh, a really technological project. Showing prospective students a facility like this mm. lets them know how serious we are about protecting their intelligence and helping create their career. I'm extremely proud of having to work on stage here with people that are working in film, making money on it, and uh, just being able to express themselves because what do, what do actors do? I, I'm so happy to be here and uh, being part of the future of Shenandoah as far as it relates to film and television. Harold Herman Lab Theater features the cutting edge of lighting and audio technology, including a 4K laser projector, lights straight from Broadway, and an advanced sound system. 
all of which come together to ensure that students' only limitations are their creativity and drive. Hello, my name is Javier Green. I'm a junior acting major at Shenandoah University. This space is designed for the students. It has the students' intent in mind and students' visions in mind. Students have many different passions here. Like some students like to do lighting labs so they can tinker around with the lighting board. And some people like to do sound so they can tinker around with the sound board. It feels warm. It feels like a nice community inside here. And it feels like we are trusting our peers and our um, teachers inside the space at all times. This space for Hal Herman was designed specifically for the students and to help students grow in their art and in their craft and overall. Thinkest I'd make a lie of jealousy to follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No. To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such a suffocate and blown surmises matching thy inference. Tis not to make me jealous to say that my wife is fair feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor for mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt. For she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. And when I doubt, prove. And on that proof, there's no more but this. Away at once with love and jealousy. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Albert. Uh, I'm an alumna of the Shenandoah Conservatory Theater Division, and I'm currently the Operations Manager and Managing Director for Shenandoah Summer Music Theater. Hi, I'm Tom Albert. I'm Professor Emeritus of Music Theater and Musical Composition, uh, and retired Producing Artistic Director of Shenandoah Summer Music Theater. Who was Harold Herman, and what was his role at Shenandoah? Well, Harold Herman founded the theater program. He invented theater at Shenandoah. It was when he came here in 1973, it was called Shenandoah College and Shenandoah Conservatory of Music. And at that time, those two schools had been one school for only a couple of years. Um, and he was hired to start a theater program. Uh, so he did. And um, 10 years later, in 1984, we opened the Summer Theater, Shenandoah Summer Music Theater, which he lobbied for for a long time and finally got the opportunity to open. So he, in, see, he invented all of the theater that happens at Shenandoah. And why did we name this theater for him? Um, well, f partly because, that, because of that, but also because he was the, he was the head of theater until I think 2004, or something like that, uh, during the academic year. He taught, when he first came, all of the classes in, in theater, um, all the acting classes. He directed all of the productions. Um, and this, the program went from a number of students of maybe they might have had, I'll guess, five musical theater majors and maybe a couple of acting majors in his first year to, uh, at the in the, you know, end of the 90s and the 2000s, there were 50 musical theater majors and another 30 or 35 acting majors and scenic and lighting design majors and costume design majors and all of those things and children's theater. Um, and he's responsible for all of that happening. So he is, the f he is not only the inventor, but he was the father of the program and the person who everybody in the school and in the community and in the larger community, he was the name that was attached to Shenandoah Theater. So it's fitting, finally, that we will have a room named for him in this building. 
thinking about, um, like you said, uh, his link to the community, what was his legacy at Shenandoah, um, here in the community? You know, what are your thoughts on that? By inventing this program, it's of course a performance program and you're gonna have to have uh, audiences for performances. So he, he made going to the theater here at Shenandoah an important part of the community, uh, an important part of the campus community, an important part of the uh, Winchester City and Frederick County community, and with the uh, opening of the Summer Theater, it became a part of a much larger community. So tens of thousands of people have come through the doors of First Armstrong in this building to see theater, and a lot of them have also then come back to, to hear concerts and see plays and go to dance concerts and, and just partake of all of the things that the conservatory has to offer. Um, so he has been, he was an ambassador for the institution. And I know that he used to say that theater going was a way of life um, and, that, and that once you go your first time, you are now a theater person for the rest of your life. Absolutely. His vision was always focused on the students. Okay. And of course that, that, that meant for most of the time that he was thinking about the students here. But with the advent of the summer theater, his vision expanded because we eventually uh, hired uh, young actors and technicians and costumers and, and everything from other schools. And they became part of the Shenandoah family and took uh, what they learned here back to their own institutions. So his vision was, was focused on Shenandoah Theater, but what Shenandoah Theater was got much larger in the 30 years that he was, that he was active in it. So that by the time he retired, he was uh, influencing not just our students, but as I said, students from other schools and many more professional actors and actresses and, and uh, technicians and other professionals in the theater. So his vision of, of providing theater for the community, that was always his vision, and, and, pro and providing it a safe experience for students, but it became those things for a much, much larger community. What other um, sort of fond memories do you have of working with Hal throughout the years, or things that, that come to mind? Uh, the, the, my fondest memory is that when we started doing auditions for the summer theater, uh, and we went to New York, and he, the, the second time we went, he said, have you ever seen a, a Broadway show? And I said, no, I've never, I've never been to New York, to, <laughs> really, that I remember. He says, that, that's ridiculous. So we went to see, my first Broadway show was Jerome Robbins Broadway, uh, which was a weird first show, but <laughs> that, that's what was available. Uh, and we saw, every year thereafter, we, when we went to auditions, we went to at least two shows. So that means in the course of, of 25 years, which we did auditions in New York for 25 years together. You were together in Fiddler how many times? Five times. Yes. Yes, and five he, times. And he made you perform in what other shows? Oh, I had to perform in um, Paint Your Wagon, uh, Shenandoah, which was the first show of the summer theater. Oh, the sound of, oh yes. How could I forget that? <laughs> The Sound of Music, which was an Albert family uh, extravaganza. Right. Uh, I, had to do, I had to do all those things on stage, and I would much rather be in the hole in front of the stage with my back to the audience, <laughs> but uh, he, he always made it sound like such a good idea that I couldn't say no. Yeah. Fair. What do you wish that today's students um, knew about how? I wish that they knew how how, of course, how important he was for the program, but how much like a father in the literal sense he was to the program. And, and not just Hal, but Hal and Lindy as well. Um, and it is, they should know that, that this room is uh, dedicated to Hal, and it's a companion, really, to the room that's across the hall, which is dedicated to Lindy. That's a rehearsal room, and that's very apt because Lindy loved the rehearsal process. And once it got to performance, she was happy to perform, 
but all the fun was on. Now she was working. Hal liked it all. Hal liked it all, and he loved performance. So the performance space is Hal's space. The rehearsal space is Lindy's space. So what do we wish that today's students and maybe future students take away from Hal's legacy um, and from their work in this lab theater? Theater is for everybody. Not everybody to perform, but theater is for everybody. It's a way of life. Theater, theater is a way, a way of, of life. life. Yep. And we need the audience as much as the people who are performing and building need to do that. I hope that they remember that the audience is their partner. That there's no point in, there's no point in doing live theater or any kind of theater if you're not thinking about the audience. Um, and that they are as important as everybody on this side of the edge of the stage. It truly is a give and take and an opportunity to work together. Yeah, he, yeah. he loved this kind of space. He, he liked he the, the studio, he loved the studio yeah. theater because it was, it was intimate. Right. Uh, and everybody was more directly involved in what was going on, even if you're just sitting and watching and listening. It's, there's something about being in a, in this, really in the same room. When you're in a big theater like the Orson Bryant Theater, you're not, the actors in the audience really are not in the same room. Right. The, the audience part is, is actually a separate room. And there are three rooms in the theater. There's more than three, but there's the stage for the actors, there's the big place with chairs for the audience, there's a hole in front of the stage where the orchestra is, if it's a musical or an opera, then there's the, the, the room behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's all these different rooms. And uh, when you're in a place like this, you're all together. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you'll learn a little bit more about the Hal Herman Lab Theater by exploring the link below and continue to support theater at Trinidad Conservatory. Hello, my name is Nick Villacorte and I'm a sophomore acting major here at Shenandoah University. Shenandoah really did a good job at making this theater, not just any old theater, but a space where us as students can really take advantage of this amazing technology. In a space like this, you know, it's not a gigantic space, but it's more compact, so I feel like we can work a lot more on our, our acting for the camera, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm very excited for all of that. All my life, I gotta hear about this story. Several times a year, as you can probably imagine, over and over and over again. You know, every year when I was a kid, they'd have this great big get-together in New Jersey. You know, they'd send flowers, cards, whiskey, cigars. All these old guys and their wives and their kids and their grandkids crying and kissing my old man and giving speeches as though what a great guy he was. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's probably because you only get to see him about once or twice a year. You know, any of you morons tried living with this guy for three days, you'd want to put him out in the ocean and drown him yourself. Huh, maybe if my ship would have blown up, I would have got a better start in life. Anyway, so naturally, when, when I got kicked out, the, my old man wouldn't even talk to me. And I don't just mean for a few days, oh no, he wouldn't talk to me again. He didn't even want my mom talking to me. I got nowhere to live. I bum around like a, like, like a bum. I got to move in with Marty now, which is totally humiliating. My old man dies, thank God, but, but then, William, then I meet you, William, and with your beautiful, beautiful generosity, you give me this job, you take little interest in me, and look at me now! <laughs> I'm a happy, healthy member of the workforce, nine months come Friday. You know, I gotta tell you, I feel really good. In closing, I wanna say a very special word of thanks again to our donors beginning with our own faculty and staff who gave not only of their financial resources but also of their time to help realize the completion of this space. And again, a huge thank you to all donors and to our cornerstone donors, Mr. Nick Narangis and Mrs. Jacqueline Miles. We couldn't have done this without all of you. Thank you. Finally, on behalf of Shenandoah Conservatory, thank you to each of you for your ongoing support. You can't imagine how anxious we are to reopen soon and to welcome you back into our performance spaces. We look forward to seeing you, hopefully soon.